Here's how to replace the lower ball joints on a Honda with double wishbone front suspension. You can see how loose the front ball joints are when I pry up on the front tires. First thing we're going to do is remove the front wheels. This car has a double wishbone front suspension, so this here is your coilover suspension, your upper control arm and upper ball joint, the steering knuckle, and then down at the bottom here we've got the lower control arm, that's your axle going over your suspension fork, and the lower ball joint at the bottom here. To access the lower ball joint down here, we need to remove the entire steering knuckle from the vehicle. To do that, we need to remove the brakes, the axle, as well as the upper control arm, and any brake lines that are holding onto it. To remove the brake caliper and bracket assembly, we're going to remove this 17mm bolt from the top here. And one more 17mm bolt down at the bottom here. Spray a little bit of lubricant on these bolts before you remove them. And then remove these two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the brake line on. All right, remove that. And then now we can remove the brake caliper from the rotor and hang that up against the strut. All right, we got that hung out of the way. Next, we need to remove these rotor screws. So I'm just gonna use a punch and hammer them out. And then I can turn it out with my screwdriver and remove the brake rotor. To loosen the tension from the lower control arm, I'm gonna remove this 17 millimeter bolt from the suspension fork. And just tap that out. Next we need to remove the axle nut, but to do that we need to remove this dimple that holds it down. I'm just going to use a flat screwdriver and tap that with a hammer. Then I'm going to use an inch and a quarter socket to remove the axle nut. Now the axle should be free, if not you can give it a little tap here. Next we need to remove the cotter pin, or whatever is left of it. And then we need to remove the 17 millimeter castle nut. So the ball joint has a taper on it that's stuck into the lower control arm. To remove that we're going to use a ball joint separator which basically has a tongue here and a bolt here that you tighten up that pushes the ball joint out of the lower control arm. I'm just going to position the tool here with the tongue on the bottom and the fork on the top. And then you can see as I tighten this guy down here, the ball joint will pop out. Alright, we're going to tighten on this 24 millimeter bolt and the ball joint should pop free. That's it, it popped free. Next we need to remove the upper ball joint from the knuckle. To do that we need to remove this cotter pin. Like that. There's one bolt here we need to remove for the ABS sensor. One trick with rusty bolts is to give them a whack so that they loosen up. And then remove the ABS wire from the knuckle. And there's one more 10 millimeter bolt that holds the ABS sensor to the knuckle that we need to remove. Alright, now we're going to remove the ABS bolt. And we got to loosen up the sensor. Give it some light taps. Alright, so I was trying to take off the ABS sensor. And because of so much rust, it just snapped in half. Next time we should disconnect the ABS sensor from inside the engine bay, that orange connector. Next we're going to remove the 17mm castle nut from the upper ball joint. Then I'm going to reinstall the nut backwards. To free the taper of the upper ball joint from the knuckle, I'm just going to hit it with a hammer. And that pops it free. Okay, the next thing we need to do is remove the tie rod end from the steering knuckle. To do that we need to remove whatever is left of the cotter pin, so set in some penetrating oil. Then I'm going to remove the 17mm nut on the tie rod end. Alright, so here I'm going to use the ball joint separator to remove the tie rod from the knuckle. This just slots into here, and I'm going to tighten down this 24mm bolt to pop it loose. Ooh. That's it. The tie rod is now free from the knuckle. Now if you had to cut off your cotter pin, like mine, you're going to have to drill a new hole in here before you put in a new cotter pin. The last thing holding the knuckle on is the upper ball joint, so we're just going to remove the castle nut. And let the upper control arm be released, and then we can remove the steering knuckle. You just lift it out from the lower ball joint and away from the axle, being careful not to pull the axle out of its sleeve. There we go. And then remove it from the lower ball joint. And then that's the knuckle free from the car. Here's the steering knuckle removed from the vehicle. Here's the ball joint. As I move it in and out, I can actually feel how much play there is. This car has over 300,000 kilometers. I'm also going to remove whatever is left of that broken ABS sensor. So I soaked it down with some penetrating oil. I'm just going to tap it out. I'm just trying to remove that ABS sensor. It's really hard. Alright, so I was finally able to drill out the ABS sensor. We're also going to need to remove this retaining ring around the drive shaft area in order to get the ball joint to come out with the press. So after a little bit of encouraging, I can just remove that with a flat screwdriver. The one thing I learned the hard way is don't pry on this surface when you're trying to remove this retaining ring because it damages the surface of the bearing and now when you rotate it the grease starts coming out. Next I'm going to use a little bit of brake cleaner and clean that surface up. 
and just use a rag and wipe it down. To press out the ball joint, I'm going to be using this ball joint press. It's basically a giant C-clamp with a bunch of adapters that adapt to the size of the knuckle and the ball joint. These are the Honda specific adapters. The way this ball joint is pressed in, it's pressed in from the top and it goes downward. So we're going to need to press it out this way. First I'm going to remove this boot so we have a place to press it onto. And once that ring is removed, then remove the boot like that. And you can really see how loose this ball joint is. There's so much play. Because my ball joint press does not have the right adapter to go on here to press out the ball joint, I'm going to have to chop off the ball stud. That's the ball stud. So here's my setup with the C-clamp. I've got this adapter here that goes onto the steering knuckle like this. And then I've got my C-clamp that goes onto that. And then in between the C-clamp screw, I'm going to push the ball joint out this way using this adapter right here. So you can definitely see that the ball joint has been broken loose. There's a crack going all the way around this way as well as on the top. But my adapter here is a little bit too small for this ball joint and it's catching on the ball joint instead of on the knuckle. It's going to pound out this guy. Alright, so this here is what's left of the ball joint. Here we have the ball stud, the ball inside of its housing, as well as the boot and the ring clip. This here is a new ball joint, it's from Mevotech. I'm going to be pressing this in using the C-clamp. This here is what the surface of the knuckle looks like inside where the... Ow. 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 Anyways, we should be cleaning the inside of this surface here with sandpaper. I'm just going to run a little bit of sandpaper in there to clean up any rust. And then just clean it up with some brake cleaner. And then apply a little bit of lubricant so that the new ball joint slides in easier. One thing you'll notice is that the OEM ball joint doesn't have a knurling on it, but the new ball joint does. Now in some of these ball joints you might have to remove the boot if it's bigger than the knurling. I'm just going to place this in here. Give it a light whack with the hammer. So you got to press in this ball joint. This stupid clamp won't fit. Clearly this thing ain't meant for Hondas. Alright, so I'm finding the C-clamp a bit annoying because you can't put it on this side because it'll crash into the knuckle here. So I've set it up in this manner where I've got two adapters down here and no adapter at the top. I'm going to try to press it in this way and the ball joint should move in this way. Okay, so I've got the ball joint seated. As you can see, the ball joint moves nicely and there was no damage to the boot or anything. The knurling made it all the way through and the backing plate is now flush with the top of the knuckle. So here I've got my knuckle with the ball joint pressed in. It's all cleaned up and ready to go. Make sure there's no gunk inside of here because that can fool with your ABS sensor. Okay, so next we're going to install the knuckle onto the car. We're going to thread in first the lower ball joint and then the axle. And you got to line up the axle. And once the axle is lined up, I'm just going to take my upper control arm and align the upper ball joint into the knuckle and replace this castle nut. And that should stop the knuckle from going anywhere. Okay, next I'm going to replace the lower ball joint into the steering knuckle. Now here at the bottom, before I replace the castle nut for the lower ball joint, I'm just going to put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads and then replace that 17mm nut. I'm just going to tighten this down. It's no longer a 17. It's not a 19. Come on, Mevotech. Alright, three quarter fits the closest. I'm just going to tighten this up. And make sure you align the castle nut with the hole so the cotter pin can go in. Next, I'm going to tighten up the upper ball joint castle nut. And make sure that the hole aligns for the cotter pin. Next, we're going to install the tie rod into the knuckle. And make sure you're going to put a little bit of fantasies on this guy for sure. And then install it in the knuckle. Once it's in, we're going to replace the nut. And then tighten it up. Then we're going to replace the ABS sensor, if applicable. Then we're going to place the 10mm bolt that holds the ABS line to the knuckle. Alright, I just realized that I left the ABS ring out of there and I assembled the whole thing already. So make sure you're not like me and you replace this ring before putting everything back together. Next we're going to replace the suspension fork if you had to remove it. Then we're going to reinstall this pinch bolt into the suspension fork. And then install the lower 17mm bolt that goes through the bushing. And then replace the 17mm bolt for the lower suspension fork. And then with a wrench on the other side I'm going to tighten this up. And then put in the axle nut. And we're just going to tighten that up. And then using a hammer and a punch, I'm just going to punch a little dimple to lock the axle nut in. Next we're going to install the brake rotor. And then replace the rotor screws. And then we're going to replace the caliper bracket. Then we're going to install the brake caliper. Then I'm going to replace the two 10mm bolts that hold the brake line on. Don't forget to replace the cotter pin on the upper ball joint. I've also got some new stabilizer links. They're from Mevotech. I'm going to install those now. Alright, I've got the stabilizer link installed. Make sure that's nice and tight. Then I'm going to install the cotter pin for the lower ball joint. And use the pliers to 
bend that so it doesn't come out. Once we made sure all the bolts are tight and everything's in, we can then go ahead and install the wheel. Finally, we're going to take the vehicle for a nice test drive and make sure that the suspension has no clunks or noises and that the vehicle tracks straight. <laughs>